uh, the first se section, we are finding ourselves in the gallery of the future. Misha Most and Kandinsky Neural Network are the ones that create this space for us. You have a fantastic opportunity to ask a question to a speaker. Just scan the QR code and send your question. And now we're having an expert who can share the trends of AI development. The uh, former uh, deputy head of Tsinghua University, Huai Zhan. Please, you have the floor. The preliminary explanation of the current status and future development of AI at Institute for AI at Tsinghua University. Hi, uh, everybody. Um, I'm Huai Zhang from uh, Institute for in, uh, AI at uh, Tsinghua University, Beijing, China. Uh, my topic here today is the uh, elementary exploration of the current development and the status and the future of AI. Um, to be honest, I am not in the position of uh, making, sorry. Uh, to be honest, I'm not in the position of uh, making those uh, forecasts and um, uh, I don't have the, uh, I don't think I have the ability to predict like what will happen in 10 years. But over here, I will just uh, emphasize on um, what our understanding of uh, current status of AI and uh, the work we, are, we have been doing and also uh, down the road what we planning to do. Um, basically, um, we, uh, basically, um, we, 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 our understanding of AI is like simulating uh, the uh, human intelligence. Um, the, the reason why we use uh, simulating is because uh, for the intelligence, even for now, I think among the top AI scientists, there's not like agree on like what the definition of the intelligence is. So we cannot simulate intelligence itself. We will intelligence the behavior of uh, uh, of human, and so here comes the main uh, two uh, ways of approaching this problem. One is uh, behaviorism, and uh, basically uh, the belief uh, in that uh, category is there are many paths to intelligence. We just uh, simulate the human intelligence uh, behavior. The second one is the uh, internalism, and. Uh, well, um, people in that category believe in that the uh, human in uh, intelligence is the only way to achieve intelligence. Uh, we mainly take the first approach. So the basic task of AI, um, other than re uh, reason, uh, reason, uh, rational thinking, uh, perception, and uh, motion uh, coordination control, we st still think we want the AI to have the emotion and the creativity, et cetera. So that's a way we see how AI goes. Um, again, um, that's our opinion and uh, open for debate. Um, the first generation in the, is uh, knowledge-based, uh, knowledge-driven, and the second generation, we call it uh, connectionism. And now I think we are in the third generation, and I will get into detail of those First, the first generation of AI, uh, symbolism. It's a simulation of human behavior. Um, that's the um, definition and the explanation of the founding fathers of AI, uh, Minsky, Mikasi. Um, I think pretty much everybody knows. Um, and the, the, the way we define reason, reasonable thinking um, is like reasoning, planning, creation, uh, etc. And the one thing uh, people at that stage doing is uh, using the expert knowledge and build knowledge base and use the inference uh, engine and uh, create output for the user. That's a typical um, what an expert system does. And the, the 
uh, and I think that most of the uh, AI book, the first couple of chapter will be about the heuristic searching model. And, uh, but then even for comp uh, composition, this um, with only four dimension involved, like pitch, length, intensity, timber, the searching space is like 10 to the 200th power. That's more than the items in the whole universe. So it's very hard to do. And uh, even in recent years, people have been doing, doing that. Um, we use like knowledge-based, rules-based model. Um, that's a work did by um, uh, Cope. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, that's a bar style music um, with certain rules and uh, certain features. Uh, this is purely like um, rule-based, uh, knowledge-driven. Mm, well, I'm not an expert in music, but I think it's reasonably well. Okay, that's uh, how we did in China. We started like uh, late 70s uh, and early 90s, uh, last century, uh, some theoretical works. And uh, also we did uh, implement the expert system to uh, diagnose and write uh, prescriptions to uh, hepatitis. And also the, in other part of the world, um, there's uh, applications and uh, uh, AI research done and also product uh, putting out for um, the uh, users. And uh, for example, the first TurboTax, it's been around for like 40 years, people paying money for it to uh, you know, file tax. That's the first generation of AI. And uh, the, w the milestone over here, um, I think a lot of people know that is the uh, um, Deep Blue against uh, Gary Kasparov. Um, and uh, basically it's uh, like a uh, use method we, we mentioned earlier, uh, human knowledge, uh, heuristic searching, et cetera. And, um, and also one of, uh, at, at least uh, well, as what I read, and that one of the member of the team is like grandmaster of chess. Um, three f main factors here involved is knowledge, algorithm, computation power. And as things get more complicated and in, so in real world, the most uncertainty involved, more data involved, and uh, uh, more information involved, uh, it's become harder. Uh, if we only use the method or model we mentioned earlier. In general, um, five conditions, these five conditions have to be met uh, for the previous work to be uh, working, uh, tourism method to be working. Um, I listed over here. Um, and also, um, those things like say playing chess, playing cards, planning, diagnosing, that thing to uh, that category to a certain extent. And now we go to the second generation of AI, connectionism. It's a simulation of a perceptual behavior. And that's the definition or explanation again um, many years ago. Uh, it's still, I think it still works here, works now. And um, well, this, uh, a lot of audience are familiar with those uh, names and uh, method and the deep learning method, and I, I won't, you know, go into uh, details for uh, theory, uh, theory wise. So after those um, algorithm and model have been proposed, and the, the change of uh, image recognition rate and the ch uh, the change of uh, speech recognition rate. Uh, uh, improve a lot, and uh, people can use it for um, identification by using uh, face recognition, um, a posture recognition, and also the last one is a, a voice print. I have. Uh, I want to mention a little bit more about it because one of my college and uh, um, the alumni of my uh, department uh, startup company based on that. Um, let me explain a little bit about the. Uh, method and the effect over here. Uh, first, um, 
the, the goal is to identify a person by uh, randomly generate eight numbers, and uh, so that person repeat their eight numbers. Uh, the algorithm will uh, recognize that uh, person and uh, let him uh, do certain things like authorize a bank trans uh, transfer or entering a uh, restricted area, etc. Um, for the, uh, the advantage of uh, using the voice print is um, is not uh, as personal as face, and also it can over here at least it can uh, detect the pre-recording uh, attack. Let's say um, s uh, somebody want to ask me if I can transfer money from your account A to B. And uh, suppose I answer no, but the person can record, uh, yes, I said earlier, like many days ago when he asked me something else, and when I said yes, he can record that part and uh, play it to fake my agreement. Um, but they, uh, the model we have here uh, can resolve that problem. Uh, the, the basic idea behind that is if you record a, a voice, you record a sound, then you somehow use a different equipment. You use a different instrument. So you compress it, or you, you did a, like a, a mecha mechanical transform of it. So once you record it and play it, you, you have two steps. And then if you answer it right at that moment, that's only one step. So the, the model, the algorithm we use over here can detect that. And also for emotion detection, um, it's like say if that, that guy, uh, when he answers the question whether he is like well awake, if, if he's not a drug or he's not drunk, or and also uh, we can detect if that person answers that question uh, at his own will. So um, that's the one. Uh, that's the implementation we have for the one of the biggest bank in China uh, at the ATM. Um, use the voice print. So as you can see, the, uh, the, the app generate uh, eight random numbers, and the customer repeat those numbers. And uh, uh, if he's the right person, And uh, again, uh, I want to give an example of uh, composing or generating music. We use uh, like, um, a couple thousand of Chinese, Japanese, and uh, Korean pop music as a training set um, so that we narrow the uh, searching tree or uh, we lower the uh, computation complexity. Um, that's the result. We have, um, oh, sorry, can, can I bring it, can I play this thing? Um, okay, so uh, anyhow, mm, so we generate music not only uh, with melody, but also with uh, accompaniment. So it's a little bit more um, complex, uh, com uh, complicated than the previous one I showed you, the Cope's one, and also, is has a, a you can see here the green part is the you can call it the, the input or the hint so we can generate a rest uh, on the fly unlike um, you have a like a long learning or uh, uh, learning process uh, or a lot of like uh, learning um, time and the resource so we, we generate on the fly and then came the uh, breakthrough of the Go game. Um, that's, mm, I won't go too deep into the detail. But then the thing is, I want to point out is the, first, the difference between the first and the second uh, generation, a, uh, generation of AI is, the first is, uh, again, knowledge-based. The second is uh, data-driven. So um, I think one of the tricks uh, they use for Go is, they not treat as a, a uh, mainly as a searching uh, tree use heuristic functions, 
but they treat the board as an image. So for the chessboard, it's only 19 by 19, so it's a 361, and the gray level is only black and white, only two, right? So most of the picture we use is like, what, uh, 512 by 512, and the gray level is uh, 0 to 255. So once we treat it as the image, so all the tools we, are, uh, we have earlier, like uh, for uh, pattern recognition, for image processing, we can all use it over here, and also with uh, reinforced learning and uh, achieve very good result. Again, um, um, as I said, it's combined data, algorithm, computing power. That's the second generation of Go. Another uh, implementation, I will just go briefly through it uh, by our group and also uh, Professor Young, uh, who gave the previous uh, speech, uh, probably mentioned it too. And also to predict the uh, stock price and to predict the uh, uh, pandemic. And this is the first, uh, from the third party's um, uh, data, um, I listed over here, and uh, that's the um, mm, startup uh, top 50, uh, well, top uh, 40 uh, startup companies uh, uh, that's worth more than 1 billion um, USD. And uh, I briefly listed over here, and I went through all of them, and uh, it can categorize into um, these category, uh, business, transportation, finance, healthcare, education, and uh, some others. And uh, the, the Chinese ones, I put the Chinese categories over there. Um, and uh, some of them uh, mm, come from uh, our institute, and uh, people found companies based on that. And uh, also, we uh, for the uh, data-driven um, uh, maximum, we use it on the uh, control of the robot. And uh, in this special case, mm, that's one of the professors over here in my lab. Uh, uh, create this uh, dexterous hand with um, dimension of, uh, with finger the dimension of uh, about a dozen, and uh, all together about uh, 20 dimensions. And uh, well, it can perform uh, on the piano and also help patients with uh, severe injured uh, arms and legs. Uh, this is the uh, um, uh, other part of the world people were doing this too, and the most famous one was the um, Boston Dynamics. Yeah, so uh, I will just list it here and uh, uh, show that uh, what we can achieve with the uh, data-driven model. And uh, that's the research uh, did by Stanford University. They predict that the main application for the next you know, now it's for the next 10 years. Uh, then the uh, the, the method we have, and we need the new algorithm because the current uh, algorithm has f uh, are, are flawed. So earlier, I, I list all these uh, requirements and the re restrictions and the conditions we have to meet for the uh, current uh, way to work. So if uh, for the real life problem, we can meet all of them, and sometimes we can meet one of the, any one of them. So if we take those restrictions out, then the AI system will have, those will have to overcome these obstacles, uh, at least over here, like um, unreliable, uncontrollable, and not easy to uh, generalize, or like, you know, um, the 
model you build in one field and uh, cannot easily migrate to the another uh, field. Um, that's one of the example. Uh, okay, so uh, the leftmost picture uh, is a snow mountain, and uh, you go through the algorithm, and uh, it says like 97% is a snow mountain, and they add uh, noise, only like 0.1% of noise, and f for human eyes, it's still a snow mountain, but then for the algorithm, it's think like 99.99% is a, is, a, is a dog. So uh, it has a robust, uh, robustness problem. That's the one uh, we have um, uh, developed. That's a, the, the algorithm we developed uh, in our um, lab. And we also found a, a company based on that. And first of all, um, we want to uh, fake the ID of the right person by uh, by putting the left person through the uh, v uh, v uh, through the camera of uh, entrance. Okay, so the threshold is uh, to 22.55. That means okay, if the threshold is higher than that, then our system will think. Uh, the person is the right person, we'll let him in. So now, okay, um, well, it, it, it did well and uh, didn't let him in. But then we have this so-called, um, I will call it white box, white box attraction. So we, because we know the, what, what the algorithm, how the algorithm works and how the uh, models AI have, especially the statistic model, um, as earlier you guys said, you add that's, very tiny, uh, small percent of uh, noise will make the system confused. So now we make this glass and uh, glasses, and the person wearing this glasses, then the similarity goes to over thir uh, 30. So then it will let this person in. So in certain uh, extent, it's not safe in that case. And also, that's by another uh, Chinese company. Um, uh, okay. Um, yeah, but I can show. I can now show the dot here. So anyway, um, for the uh, picture second to the left, uh, we put a small logo, very tiny logo, up there. So the uh, automatic uh, driving uh, detection uh, algorithm uh, at the upper um, picture, it can detect the vehicle. But with that small, tiny logo over there, it can't detect the vehicle anymore. So for, from the AI point of view, from the uh, algorithm point of view, there's no car over there. So that's very dangerous, right? And over here, same thing. Um, since we, we can di dig into the algorithm and dig into the uh, data, so we know the weakness of the AI. So when we try to detect a moving object, in this case, a person, and uh, uh, the right person, we can correctly de detect it. The, the left person, we build a specific um, T-shirt. Um, then the person wear the T-shirt, the algorithm can't recognize him. Um, I, I was thinking of bringing the T-shirt over here to, to, to test it, but then um, I said, what the heck, maybe, maybe uh, the, the customer won't, won't let me in. <laughs> um, so the basic, thing, the basic idea is um, because the second generation of AI is a statistical model, so it's more or less, uh, in my opinion, it's an uh, induction model. It's a, not a deduction model. So um, some of the... Uh, it, some of the judgment and, con con uh, and the uh, conclusion is made uh, is not correct, and sometimes will cause danger. Hmm? <coughs> so, uh, other than the uh, f five things I er earlier mentioned, and we also need to build um, explainable uh, AI. Uh, Especially in the uh, crit uh, mission critical 
case, like say uh, a doctor cannot say, oh, okay, I look up all your uh, test result and all your symptoms and based on my experience, I want to cut half your liver. No, they can't do that. They have to explain to you why, right? And then for the AI models we have so far, we, we, don't, we can't explain why, because it's all mixed up. Uh, the, the data and the uh, inference process is not transparent. Uh, and another, uh, another example is like, you know, you, you want to bomb a tank and you say, okay, go through the AI detection system, you say the tank, then you have to explain why it's a tank, not a bus, right? So um, right now, most of the system, at least most of the system, most of the application cannot answer that question. So we propose the third generation of AI. We combine the knowledge-driven and data-driven. So in this case, we have four factors other than three. So we have knowledge, data, algorithm, combination, power. And uh, well, um, this is another uh, work we have um, uh, tried in that direction. and. Uh, we published some papers, and also we have the product as well. And so after we installed the AI firewall, then the, um, the, the, the class doesn't work, and uh, the person cannot log in. Oh, this one, um, well, I won't get into details because I think a lot of um, uh, things are you guys already know, and uh, my previous uh, lectures, and they, they already mentioned it, but um, um, I'll just li list it over here. And uh, for the chat box, the same thing. Um, the first two generations in the focus on search and sorting, and uh, the current generation um, take full advantage of the computation power and the uh, data, and of course, the uh, models. Uh, we have new models we have and they have a very uh, good result um, let's see so um so what's next um, I think the f the first um, well everybody I think everybody here is uh, focused on that too and it's called um, multi-module and um, even if uh, even as we are speaking now I think the uh, uh, open AI or the other groups, they, the, and people predict the next version, the f uh, 5.0 will be multi-module, well, we'll see. And uh, in, the, in the same direction, we, uh, I've, uh, we have heard of that, the uh, segmentation of everything. Um, we try to work on that too, is this is one of my uh, alumni and uh, uh, what they did is uh, let's see, yeah, what they did is not only uh, pictures and uh, also videos and also this is doing in real time and uh, um, a couple thousand people in it and uh, not only the uh, front view you have the side view and people are moving and so it can uh, correctly identify uh, each one of them. And another thing is, I think what we can do is we build applications um, based on uh, domain-specific knowledge um, on, and also on the uh, fundamental model. Um, like earlier, you guys can see the uh, object tracking, uh, object tracking and the image generation and uh, uh, classification. Uh, another challenge um, I gave a uh, last example over here. Uh, so what, uh, what happened when I input, he kicked the door in anger and march out. And this is AIGC generated um, pictures. The first three one, well, more or less match the requirement in my description. But the last one, last three, uh, is, is some of them are far off. Um, I think the main reason is uh, AI
So uh, that's the dangerous part, right? Especially when you want to process the, um, you know, when you want uh, involved in a uh, mission critical task, as I mentioned earlier. And also, uh, AI governance, um, because different countries have different laws, different rules, and different asset group as, as that. And I uh, think for the next couple of days, uh, other scientists will uh, discuss about that. And uh, I only even give examples because I, I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> Um, so AI alliance, um, that's a big uh, issue as well, right? So you cannot ask AI, say, okay, how to make drugs, how to make m m nuclear weapons, right? It should, it shouldn't answer you that question. And uh, that's like the, um, uh, the, uh, a, uh, the AI has to be, has the uh, same understanding of the world uh, as human, and also uh, align with, uh, you know, uh, align with say, what uh, people think. And uh, now, in conclusion, and uh, I, despite all these obstacles, I still think a machine can replace uh, many of the simpler mental task of human and uh, we need to work on it and that's conclude my talk mm, thanks everybody thank you thank you mr john your presentation sparked a lot of interest and curiosity among our audience can I ask you maybe one question we have a lot but as usual, only for one time, only for one. Go so, ahead. LMS tend to think consequently item by item, but people usually think differently, holistically with a like a helicopter view approach. What do you think in the right way to overcome this behavior of AI to make it more human? Should we go in this direction at all? Uh, that, that's a very good question, and uh, well. Uh, I think the, what, what they call that, let bygones be bygones. So that uh, let machine do what is good at, let human do what, it, what we are good at. So uh, I, I still always question why we want the machine has emotion or, or, or you know, like, uh, like, uh, like human, human feelings. Yeah, yeah it's, it might not necessary. And uh, also it can, um, I think it can re replace a lot of mental work and physical work. But for emotion part, I, I, I really don't think we need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's my own opinion, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your uh, time and uh, such a frightful answer. Uh, all of us enrich our experience with you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.